Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. How are you doing at the moment? Do let me know in the comments or over on social media. If you need a chat or anything, if you're struggling or you just want someone to talk to, please do come over and find me because I'd be happy to chat to you. I hope you're doing as well as possible at the moment. I'm kind of very up and down still, but just trying to take each day as it comes. Um, in today's video, I thought it might be helpful if I talked about some ways that you can look after your mental health during this lockdown um, pandemic. Um, obviously, you know, if you've got mental health problems already, this could exacerbate them and make them worse. And even if you've never had mental health problems before, this situation is enough to put stress on anybody and to make anybody's mental health worse. So I think it's really important that as well as kind of keeping our physical self safe that we are really looking out for our mental health and you know making sure we're doing as okay as possible. Um, so I've come up with a few tips and ideas, some of the things that I've been doing for quite a long time um, that I have found that kind of helped me with my mental health. I've also spoken to some of my friends, um, a lot of them have been housebound for a long time and they've kind of shared some of the things they do to help their mental health and also just sort of things that have come from professionals as well. So there's quite a lot of different things there, um, but I thought I would just share some of them in case you kind of haven't seen them and hopefully they might help with kind of just trying to protect your mental health a bit at the moment and try and kind of keep on a bit of an even keel. So I'll go through them all, no particular order, and just chat a little bit about each one and hopefully there'll be something in there that might be able to help you. So my first piece of advice would be to plan things to look forward to. And this can come in two different kind of guises, I suppose. Um, one, you can plan things to look forward to in the here and now. Um, they're obviously gonna be different to maybe the things that you might have originally kind of planned before this. But I try and do this just because you need some stuff to keep you going and you know if you're struggling with childcare or if you're struggling with your work or if you're just struggling with being at home and having to be isolated you really just need things to try and keep you going and to yeah brighten your day a bit so it doesn't have to be huge stuff it could be reading a chapter from your book it could be watching your favorite program on tv or watching something that you've been kind of wanting to watch for a while um, it could be, I don't know, buying a nice meal or your favourite chocolate to eat. Um, it could be, you know, calling a friend, FaceTiming family, anything. It, it's going to be like really specific to you and what you would look forward to. But I just think it's really important to make sure that each day you've got things to look forward to because I find like when I've, I mean, I've been housebound on and off for a number of years and if i haven't got things to look forward to it just makes it a lot harder to get out of bed and to keep going and yeah i've tried to find a lot of little things over the years because that's what you have to do when you're chronically ill and housebound um and those little things just keep me going sometimes so yeah plan things like that but you can also plan things for the future things that you want to do when lockdown is finished and when things hopefully start to get back to some sort of normality you know plan stuff that you want to do and again it doesn't have to be huge things like holidays or anything like that it could simply be meeting up with your family or a friend you know that you haven't been able to see or I don't know going for a walk if you're isolated and not able to go out anything like that that you can just kind of have in the back of your mind as things that you kind of are wanting to do once this is over and to look forward to. Obviously when this is over, life isn't gonna be the same for a lot of people. People will have lost somebody, um, people will have been like extremely ill and that is gonna change them. People will have been affected economically, all sorts of things. So obviously it's gonna depend on what your situation is. But even if you're going through the darkest of times at the moment, there will be things that you can plan to look forward to, family members or friends that you haven't been able to see. So I kind of like to like write that stuff down and then if I'm struggling, I can look at that list and think, this is what we're working towards. These are the things that I am gonna treasure so much when we're allowed to do those things again. So I would try and do a little bit of both because you don't want too much that's just, 
yeah that has like no end date and you're not quite sure when it's going to happen but at the same time it's quite good to have some of those long-term goals as well so the next thing that I have found that helps with my mental health quite a lot is at the end of each day to write down like one thing or three things, it doesn't really matter how many, um, that you have been grateful for in that day or that have made you smile or a bit of both. Um, someone told me this once a while ago now and I do try and do it when I can because sometimes you get through a day and you just think that was an awful day, nothing good happened, everything went wrong, I felt terrible and actually if you sit down and just have a think about was there something that I was grateful for, you know, did I um, speak to a friend or family member on the phone, have I got a roof over my head and that's what I'm grateful for, did the sun shine and that made me smile even those like little things if you can get to the end of the day and find things to write down all of a sudden even though you've had like a really awful day there's just that little glimmer of light and I think that is really important I've got a favorite quote in Harry Potter which is happiness can be found even in the darkest of places if one only remembers to turn on the light and I think that's something that we need to do sometimes and I remind myself of that quite a lot because if you're just focusing on the bad stuff then that is all you're going to see and sometimes I just have to say to myself yes this has been bad, yes I feel terrible and kind of ex you know accept that and acknowledge that but there's got to be some glimmer of light somewhere like something must have happened or something I must have something that I'm grateful for and just writing those things down can like I don't know just help to lift my mood a little bit and also I find reading them back sometimes can be quite helpful because if you're having a really difficult day it can help just to read back through all the things that have made you smile and that have you have felt grateful for because all of a sudden you realise even if things are terrible there are still those little glimmers of hope so yeah I would really recommend doing that as often as you can. Another thing that I have always found very helpful ever since I started having mental health problems and sort of became housebound is to try and do at least one productive thing a day and again this can vary a huge amount depending on how much you feel able to do or you know what you want to do um, but I just found having something productive in my day gives me a sense of achievement and purpose so it could be something as simple as getting out of bed or getting dressed or getting washed um, if that's kind of the level you're at at the moment then, that, then that's absolutely fine you know if you've been in bed for a few days because you just couldn't face getting out and facing the world if you've been able to get out of bed then that is a massive achievement so yeah I would just try and find something productive that you can do if you want to make a list and then pick off that list every day then that's great I mean I will sometimes just say to myself okay I just want to sort out like one drawer in my office and it might not take it might take more than a day that's fine but it gives me such a sense of achievement when I've actually done it and I feel like I've done something worthwhile and I think when your mental health is bad you can often feel like you don't have a lot of purpose and you haven't achieved anything so yeah try and find little things that you want to get done even if it's like um, if you've got a colouring book and you want to try and colour in a page from that that's fine it doesn't have to be like you know anything groundbreaking or huge whatever it is that you want to get done put that on your list and once you've done it take a photo or something because I tend to like I'm looking back through my phone at my photos and I'll find like a picture of a drawer that's all like nice and tidy and I'll think oh yeah like I did that and yeah I was quite proud of myself for doing that despite feeling rubbish so yeah I've always found it very helpful to try and find little productive things that I can do each day just to give me a sense of purpose and a sense of achievement. Another tip for helping your mental health is to try and get a change of scene whenever you can. Obviously this isn't the easiest thing to do at the moment with us, you know, having to stay at home a lot. But even if it's, you know, a case of moving from your bed or your sofa to have perhaps sitting by a window for a little bit or going and sitting in your garden or on a balcony if you've got those, um, 
I just think it can really help. I know sometimes like I will have been in the house all day and will be feeling pretty down and pretty rubbish to be honest and sometimes I'll just go and sit in the garden obviously when it's nice and sunny and not when it's pouring with rain um, but I'll go and sit in the garden for a few minutes and it will just give me a little bit of a lift um, or sometimes I will just go and watch out the window if I can't go out in the garden I'll watch out the window and watch the rain coming down and the squirrels playing on the grass and I don't know I think it's just getting a change of perspective from where you are at the moment can really be helpful I mean obviously if you're able to go out for walks at the moment or to go out for exercise that's great um, but not everybody can do that so it's kind of finding different ways you can do those things so even if that is just what looking out the window for a few minutes give it a try because certainly for me I find it really helpful so following on from that tip I would also really recommend putting bird feeders outside if you can I know obviously not everyone is able to do this if you don't have a garden or an outside space but if you do I would really recommend putting a bird feeder out and actually I think you can get some that you literally put on the outside of a window and I just absolutely love it it's one of my favorite things to do is to sit look out of the window into our garden and watch the birds we are quite lucky we back onto woodland so we get quite a lot of wildlife coming in our garden and I love it but you know even if you live in the middle of a city you can still get birds coming into your garden or onto your balcony and things like that and I don't know maybe it, I'm getting older but I just absolutely love sitting and watching the birds I like trying to like work out what different birds we've got coming into the garden I mean now I kind of recognize most of them but occasionally we'll get one that comes in and I won't really know what it is so I'll start looking to try and work out what it is but I just love watching them and I find it really relaxing we get the squirrels um what else do we get the odd cat <laughs> um but yeah there's all sorts of things that come in the garden and you know in the sort of this time of year you start to get babies although I think actually it's a little bit early but yeah you start to get babies and I was so excited when we started getting like blue tip babies and we had baby squirrels one year and I don't know it just makes me smile so give it a try you never know you might like it um but it's always worth trying you know you can, I think you can probably pick up some bird food at a supermarket or on Amazon or something like that so yeah give it a try and just see see what you think about it <laughs> another thing that is really important at the moment is to make sure you're still socializing and obviously at the moment you're going to have to find other ways to socialize because we can't go out and socialize with friends and family um but i think it's really important to try and keep some social contact going just yeah for your mental health because i know if i've gone a long time without any kind of social contact that massively impacts on my mental health um so yeah look into things like facetime and zoom and other video calling things because certainly for me they have been lifesavers so i run a mental health group um we usually meet once a month in person which we can't do at the moment but now we're having weekly um zoom meetings and yeah it's just been brilliant to be able to just sit and chat to people for a while about anything that comes up not necessarily mental health but just how we're feeling and what we've been getting up to um yeah it's been amazing and I've also been like facetiming quite a few of my friends and obviously family I've been facetiming my um, niece and nephew and my siblings and it just is honestly like the highlight of my day um I would yeah my mental health would be so much worse without those kind of social contacts so yeah I would really really recommend if you haven't been doing it already try and find different ways to socialize with friends and family that you're not currently seeing in person the next thing is something that probably goes without saying but it is really important for mental health and that is to get enough sleep I don't know about you but at the moment I am not sleeping that well I mean I don't sleep brilliantly anyway but I just have found ever since this all started I've been a lot more restless I've been having really weird dreams um, and I've just felt exhausted all the time so I need to work harder on my sleep routine definitely I'm going to bed too late waking up too late and it's just not making me feel very good so I would just really recommend 
working out a good sleep routine making sure you're getting enough sleep and if you're not getting enough sleep try and make sure you're kind of getting at least some rest um don't kind of beat yourself up too much or give yourself too much of a hard time if you're not sleeping as well as you usually do. I think that's probably to be expected at the moment. But yeah, do make sure you're kind of prioritising at least trying to get some sleep and some rest because I know for me, if I'm tired, my mental health just goes straight down. So yeah, it's definitely like one of my top priorities is to just try and make sure that I'm well rested. My next tip is something that I am not very good at doing. I'll be honest um, and that is to try and get some exercise each day um, this is going to vary a lot depending on your level of health depending on um, whether you're able to leave the house I have not been very good at this at all I mean I'm chronically ill and disabled and I find exercise very difficult especially since I had surgery last year um, I'm now even more immobile but I do have physio exercises that I should be doing and I have been pretty lax at them to be quite honest um, hopefully my physio isn't watching this um, and yeah I just I know that if I set aside a bit of time to actually just do a few of my exercises and my exercises are little like stretches and little movements of my leg that's it it's nothing like groundbreaking um, although for me they are really difficult but I know if I just tried to set aside a little bit of time for some movement that that would probably make me feel a bit better um obviously if you're able to do a bit more you know you could do some yoga some pilates um there's the joe wicks workouts on youtube there's so much online at the moment for like exercise and stuff um if you're able to leave the house and just go for a walk that's brilliant I think it's just about trying to get a little bit of movement in even if it's just some little gen gentle stretches if that's all you're able to do it's just moving your body a little bit a little bit of time doing something different and it's definitely something that I think I need to try and work on because I do think like in the long run it will help my mental health something that I have always found really important ever since I first started getting ill when I was a teenager is to try and keep to some sort of routine obviously your routine may not be the same at the moment as it was before the lockdown um you know most people were probably going out to work and going out socializing and looking after the kids and taking them to school and all that kind of stuff and everything is very very different now so you may have to come up with a bit of a new routine but i would just recommend making sure that you're kind of following some sort of routine so you know trying to get up at a similar time each day going to bed at the same time eating regular meals um and then other things as well that you know putting things in there so that you've just got some sort of routine to follow obviously you know if you haven't got that many commitments at the moment it doesn't need to be like really really regimented but I just find I need some sort of routine in my life because as soon as routine gets out goes out the window my mental health takes a big hit so it's taken me a little while I mean my life isn't hugely different because I spend a lot of time at home anyway it hasn't changed significantly apart from the fact that I haven't got a lot of like medical appointments at the moment and I'm not able to kind of go out for leisure like once in a while um so my routine hasn't changed like a huge amount but it has changed a bit and it's taken me a little while to kind of find a new normal and to kind of get into it but I do find that having a routine it just gives me a sort of purpose for the day it, like I get up knowing what sort of routine I'm going to follow and yeah it all made, I think it just gives me a little bit of motivation to kind of of something to follow during the day so I would if you're not already following a routine just try and put in like a really simple one like you know start with a getting up time and a bedtime and your meal times and then that's it um but I would yeah recommend trying to put something in because certainly for me it really helps Another thing that I think is really important for mental health is to get some sunlight every day. Um, not always easy in England. We have been quite lucky with the weather recently, but today it's pouring with rain. Um, and with so many people being in their homes a lot, um, something that I do think will possibly happen is that people may end up with vitamin D deficiencies. I know I certainly did when I became housebound. Um, so it's quite important I think to try and get some sort of sunlight because one it will help your vitamin D and two it does help boost your mood. I know when I've been going out in the garden um, it just 
yeah lifts my mood feeling the sunshine on my face and seeing yeah the nice sunshine <laughs> um it just does help and obviously on a day like today that's not so easy but the sun's still there it's just behind the clouds so even if you know you just poke your head out the window for a few minutes or sit by a window if you're not able to do that i think that will just kind of help lift your mood a bit otherwise i find you're kind of stuck in the house and it's a bit dark and um yeah sometimes you just need to get outside and get some light um but obviously that's not possible for everyone at the moment so just making sure you like open the curtains open the blinds and just get a little bit of sunlight in and also if you don't already it might be worth looking into taking a vitamin d supplement um obviously check with your doctor if you're kind of worried about taking something but i was put on vitamin d supplements um years ago when i became housebound and i think like that definitely helped with my mood because low vitamin d can cause your mood to drop as well so yeah something to look into and kind of ask a medical professional for advice on something that i find quite difficult actually and i feel a little bit embarrassed to admit it um but it's really important for mental health and that is to keep up with personal hygiene um i find it difficult for two reasons one is my depression just makes me not feel particularly motivated to do it and also with a chronic illness it just is quite difficult however i know from experience that if i haven't washed if i haven't washed my hair in a long time if i haven't been able to have a shower in a long time i don't feel good about myself and that impacts on my mental health and it's very easy when you're stuck in the house and you're not going out to just kind of think well what's the point no one's going to see me i'm not going to see anybody but I think it is really important to still keep up with those things. You know, if you can't have a shower or a bath every day, just giving yourself a little like um, strip wash or something like that, splashing your face with water, putting on a bit of deodorant, whatever it is that kind of makes you feel like you, just try and make sure you're still doing it. Because I know how rubbish it feels when you haven't been able to wash. Like when I had my operation on my leg, um, I wasn't able to have like a bath or shower for like, I think it was about two weeks. And I just felt horrible. And that first shower I had, oh my goodness, it was hard work, but it felt so good. Um, and it did, it did really help my mood. Although I was like in a lot of pain and exhausted after it, my mental health definitely felt a lot better because I just, I don't know, I felt clean and I felt nice and I felt a little bit better about myself. So yeah, make sure you're still trying to keep up with personal hygiene. I think now it's even more important because you kind of want to treat yourself a little bit so you know use that nice bubble bath that you've been saving for a special occasion or yeah that nice shower gel or whatever that is just i think i think that like act of self-care just really really helps so yeah make sure you're keeping clean <laughs> the next tip is something that is really important at the moment and that is to control your media and news consumption um certainly at the moment Every time you turn on the TV, every time your phone goes with that like news app, it's just it's just hard. There's so much stuff, and it's all negative at the moment, and it just gets really exhausting. I don't know about you, but I go through phases of sometimes just like reading and watching too much news, um, and then just kind of going cold turkey and not doing anything. Um, and certainly when I'm consuming too much. It definitely affects my mental health um, I go through days where I've possibly like read too many articles that have been shared on Facebook and then I've put the news on and I just end up feeling all the feelings I get I get upset I get angry I get frustrated I feel hopeless I feel useless and it's just not good for you um, so I think it's really important to control that consumption. So I know a lot of people that I know are setting aside like a specific news program or a specific time for looking at the news. And I think that's a really good idea. So for me at the moment, I try and watch the 10 o'clock news in the evening because that's what works best for us. Um, I do occasionally look at stuff on my phone, but I'm trying really hard not to, to like sort of spend too much time because yeah you just get lost in a bit of a wormhole and it's just not doing any good for my mental health i am one of those people that like to keep informed um 
I think since doing my journalism degree I've always liked to be able to know like what's going on in the world and to watch the news so for me like cutting out all news like doesn't work I like to know what's happening so limiting it is like the best like solution for me I know some people aren't watching any of it at all and that's fine as long as you're kind of able to keep up with the latest stuff that you need to know um it's about finding what's right for you i think and also making sure you're looking at reputable sources there's a hell of a lot of stuff going around at the moment usually on social media um that is questionable <laughs> to say the least and it's just doing nothing for people's mental health it's spreading fear it's spreading confusion and it's just not good for anybody so make sure you're kind of getting your news from a reputable source and kind of limiting it to what you feel able to cope with. Something that you can do to try and relax a bit at the moment, because let's face it, it's not easy, um, is to try and find a relaxation technique that works for you. I mean, there are so many that I'm not even gonna try listing them. Um, have a look on YouTube or do a bit of a Google because there is honestly something for everybody. Um, something that I quite like are the Calm and Headspace apps. Um, I think they're free apps but then they have things you can pay for. Um, I've certainly been able to use them without having to pay for stuff um, but there are like add-ons I think and also I think they're putting out some free content at the moment so I will link them below if you want to check them out. Um, those are a lot of like guided meditation and breathing techniques and those seem to work for me. Um, I do need to kind of get back into them because I've not been very good at keeping up with them. But certainly when I use them, I find them really helpful. But it literally could be anything that you find relaxing. So if that's listening to a piece of music or watching something on the TV that just helps you to zone out or doing some yoga or singing or doing art you know whatever it is that helps you to relax I think it's just trying to find something that works for you and something that you can do that kind of gets you away from everything else that's happening in the world at the moment and I know for me that has been really important because sometimes you just need to like decompress and certainly at the moment with everything that's going on I've needed to be doing that a hell of a lot more so yeah now's a good time to try different work like try different things out see what works for you and then allow yourself that time of just yeah decompressing and relaxing a bit and then adding on to that something that i have personally found quite helpful for relaxing and that i've only discovered like fairly recently is to listen to disney piano music on youtube i mean there's a lot out there you literally type in disney piano music and you get all sorts of playlists and yeah I've absolutely loved it I've had it on in the background a lot and I'm a big Disney fan anyway and so having some like nice relaxing piano music that I can sing along to has just been a great tonic for me and then I want to finish this video with a couple of kind of information slash very like more serious points and the first one is that if you are already under mental health services make sure you know what your kind of plan is at the moment so make sure you've got a crisis plan that you know who you're meant to contact if you're having a crisis or if you need help make sure you speak to your team and make and understand kind of what the plan is because things are changing appointments in person aren't happening groups aren't happening day treatment isn't happening so it's really important that you know what to do if you're struggling and I know you know a lot of NHS people are saying make sure you're still reaching out for help for other things if you need help with them because the last thing they want is for people to be getting more ill or struggling with other conditions so yeah talk to your team give them a ring send them an email however you contact them and make sure you know exactly what that plan is write it down so that if you get into a crisis then you know exactly what you have to do and also make sure you tell them if you're struggling you know even if you don't feel like you're in crisis but you need a bit of help make sure you communicate that to them because most of them have kind of put contingent contingency plans in place to make sure that there is still support there so yeah please don't suffer in silence and then the last thing that I would say is please do not be afraid to use helplines. Um, there are people like the Samaritans, Mind, the Crisis Line, if you're under mental health services, they're there to help you. Yes, they're getting a lot of calls and emails at the moment, but they are trying to help everybody. And 
I don't, I don't think they would want people to be suffering in silence. So if you're struggling, don't put off contacting somebody because the help is there. Yes, it is a bit stretched at the moment, but it's still there. You deserve it. You, If you need it, use it because that's what it's there for. And hopefully they will be able to help you, even if it's just somebody to talk to or if they can kind of coordinate something to help put in something a bit more long term for you. I've used the Samaritans and Mind and the Crisis Line before actually and um, and Beat as well for eating disorders and they've all been really really helpful for me so at the moment I would say now more than ever reach out to those places even if you've never had to reach out for mental health support before you know don't be embarrassed or ashamed if you feel like you need it just yeah just reach out because no yeah no one wants anyone suffering in silence and at the moment it's just understandable that people's mental health will suffer so please <laughs> I can't say it enough please please reach out for help if you don't contact one of those contact your GP um yeah don't be alone in it so those are all the sort of tips and advice that I have got for you today about how to look after your mental health at the moment. I really hope you have found it helpful and that maybe there's something there that you have been able to pick up and use. If you have enjoyed the video and you'd like to say, see more, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the notification bell, that means you'll get notified every time I upload a video so you don't miss anything. Leave me a comment, let me know how you're getting on at the moment, how is your mental health, how are you managing your mental health, is there something else that's kind of helping you that I haven't mentioned, please do share it because I think that would be helpful for everybody. Also let me know if there's any other videos you'd like to see me do, whether that is something around the current situation that we're in, whether it's mental health, physical health or something completely different, let me know what you'd like to see. Also give me a follow on social media, um, I'm mainly on Instagram, Twitter sometimes as well, my links are in the description bar but I'll pop them here as well and it would be really great to see you over there and I will see you again in another video very soon. Take care and stay safe. Bye!